What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the Fighting Game Tutorial Series, we are going to be going over AI. AI stands for Artificial Intelligence, basically having the computer control a character instead of another player. And so when I go into arcade mode, not versus, versus is going to be player controlled, but arcade mode is going to be controlled by AI. And so in this case, I'm still picking the character that I'm fighting for the AI. Let's say we pick our character and we go into a stage. When we come into the level here, you'll see the stage intro plays, the character entrances play just like normal. Everything is going the way we expect. The only difference is I won't be able to control the character. The character will be controlled by the AI. You can see I can press any direction I want, do whatever I want, and nothing's happening. Of course, I can still control player one, just not player two. Player two is not controlled by a player controller, but instead an AI controller. Now, this is just the basic setup, but of course, we're gonna have so many things we're gonna do with AI in the future. So this is a great starting point, and I'm so excited to share it with you guys. Before we hop into the episode, if you want to get caught up in the series, feel free to check out this playlist in the top right corner right here. This is the entire fighting game playlist, so you can check out everything we've done to get to this point in the series. Alternatively, if you don't care about that and you just care about AI, I recommend you watch this episode right here, which is where we initially set up our player controllers, which is what we're going to be using for AI. They're different types of controllers, they're AI controllers, but same process, same idea. And knowing that would really give you a head start. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. This is a code and blueprint tutorial series, but we're going to be doing almost everything in the C++. Before we go into Visual Studio, I actually want to make a new class. So I'm in Unreal Engine 4, but this will work the same way in Unreal Engine 5. In Unreal Engine 4, go to Add and Import, and in Unreal Engine 5, just hit New. Then we're going to make a new class, but we don't want to make a Blueprint class. We want to make a new C++ class. And to do that, we can open up this little guy here, or basically go one step behind our content folder, and we will see our C++ classes. You want to click on this and then hit add import or new and then new c++ class now we're choosing the class to inherit from so we're going to go show all classes and i'm going to look for my ai controller unreal does already have an ai controller that is a child of the standard controller and so i recommend we start with this one so i have my ai controller i'm going to hit next and then i'm going to name it what i want i just called mine base ai controller and I've already created mine, so I won't be able to do it. But this shouldn't be taken, and then you can simply hit Create Class. Now, if you're running from the editor like I am, it is going to take a second to do this. It will ask you to reload the project files in Visual Studio. Even if it doesn't, I recommend that you do it anyway. It will create the base AI controller.cpp and .h files. It should open these automatically for you, but if it doesn't, you can find them in the source, the regular folder, or if you change the path, of course, just go find it at the path that you changed it to. And we're gonna wanna open them both up. Here is the base AI controller. When it just gets created, it's gonna look like this. You'll see it has my copyright in it because I made that episode on copyright and project settings. And so it's got my copyright notice instead of the regular Unreal one, but otherwise your .h file for your base AI controller should look exactly the same. Then we have the base AI controller.cpp, which is going to look like this by default. You may not have this constructor by default. If you don't, we're going to go ahead and add this now before we do anything else. We need to make sure we have a constructor for our class, and we're going to just name it the same thing as our class name. That's how we create a constructor. So we have a base AI controller, parentheses. Then in the .cpp file, we're going to make a function body for this. So a base AI controller, a base AI controller. And now this is the very basic AI controller setup. It's not really going to do anything yet, but we can use it to possess pawns already. And then of course we can add logic in here to actually do whatever we want with those possessed pawns. So now that we have this set up, I'm gonna go ahead and launch the editor again, and I'll catch up with you when it's done. The editor is back open, so let's go ahead and take care of the blueprint component of this episode. That's going to be in our game mode BP. We could definitely do this in the code, but the rest of the logic for the game mode BP already covers basically what we're going to need to do, so we might as well keep it in here. I'm going into the spawn players function of the game mode BP, and this is where we're spawning the characters based on their selections from the previous screens. 
and we have player one and player two. For this episode, we are going to assume that player one is always a human controlled character. Of course, this could change, but we're not worrying about that for now. So we're going to go down to our player two logic where player two is being spawned and we're actually assigning the player two variable in the game mode. And here we were getting all actors of class to actually grab the base player controller at index one, meaning we were grabbing the second player controller. We were using that to possess player two. Now this was good when we had controllers. Of course, we want the second controller to possess controller two. But this can change a bit when we're working with an AI. It's not a player controller we want anymore. It's our AI controller that we want to use. So instead of possessing it just off this base player controller, we have to determine what type of game mode it is, then use that information to figure out what we should use to possess the pawn with or the character with. And to do this, I'm using my game instance reference and grabbing my game mode type, which is a variable we created earlier in the series. We perform a switch statement off of that and we get all the values that we will need. So we have our story, arcade, versus, online, and practice. For the time being, we're gonna say versus is two players fighting each other, and so that is going to use the base player controller, and story and arcade is going to be a player fighting an AI. So we're gonna spawn the AI controller for that one. You can see I'm cleaning it up here. That way I can kind of do it live with you and you can see how I'm implementing it. All right, so now to go through this step by step, we have our player two being set. And then after that, instead of just grabbing the base player controller, we're going to get our game instance reference. We're gonna drag off of it and get our game mode type. Then we're gonna drag off of that and look for switch on e game mode type, which is going to get this right here. Now, if it's a versus scenario, we're gonna use our base player controller to do all the logic that we are already doing in the game mode BP. We're not gonna modify that logic. We're just only gonna do it for versus. However, for story in arcade, we wanna do something different. We wanna spawn actor from class and we're going to spawn a base AI controller. Spawn actor from class node requires a transform. We already have a get actor transform that we can use here. This is the get actor transform of the player start. We were plugging it in to other various things in this function, such as when we were actually spawning the player controller in here. But the one that's being plugged into determine character class will work fine here. So plug that in and then call possess. The pawn is the character we're spawning. So really the controller is the target and player two is the in pawn. And that's what our game mode BP is going to look like now. I'm going to clean it up a little bit further, then we're going to go back to the code. Now that we're back in the code, we want to go to our base player controller.cpp. Our base player controller is just that it is a player controller, not an AI controller. However, the base player controller does have some behavior for our keyboard mode. That will be messed up if we don't actually have two base player controllers, if we don't have two characters with base player controllers on them. So if we have one base player controller and one AI controller, it is actually going to get messed up and we need to address this. So let's scroll down to our determine input device details. Here, determine input device details. This gets called when any input is pressed and this player controller is in play. In our game, we have something called keyboard mode, which is where two players can play on one device, such as a keyboard. To handle this properly, we do check for specific keys on the keyboard and consider them keyboard mode inputs so that we know if player two is playing on a keyboard or their own device. Additionally, allows us to determine if the player is joining in. So if player two is joining in on the keyboard, if we're gonna have players that can join in and drop out of fights. Let's scroll down in our function and we'll get to this part right here where we're casting to the game mode. And here we are grabbing the game mode player two variable and setting it equal to the player two reference. If that is valid, we go into the if statement and we were grabbing the player two references controller. We should definitely do that. However, you'll see it is commented out right now. 
Instead, I've replaced it with this line. So the only change I'm making in this file is replacing the commented outline with this line right here. And the reason I'm doing it is because the behavior inside of this if statement is something we only want to do if player two references controller is a base player controller. We did actually cast to a base player controller inside of the behavior within this if statement. However, is input device gamepad is a base player controller variable. If this cast fails, it will return a result other than a base player controller, which means is input device gamepad won't be able to be found and it will cause a crash. So I'm updating the old if statement to look like this so that we can do the cast to the base player controller before entering any of this logic. This will allow us to keep the logic we have in here when two players are playing against each other, but remove it when there is a player versus an AI or something different than that. So I've now made it if auto base PC for base player controller equals cast to a base player controller. And what we're casting is the player to reference gate controller. So if this cast fails, it will just skip this entire if statement. Going into the else statement here is actually fine. So we don't have to do anything to stop it. It is still valid for if we have one base player controller and an AI controller. But this if statement right here absolutely must be skipped if this is not a base player controller. Additionally, this allows us to clean up some of the behavior inside of the if statement. Now, instead of having the cached right here, when we're grabbing is input device gamepad, we can remove this entire thing and just replace it with base PC. And then we can do it for these two sections down below as well. So base PC and base PC. That looks a lot cleaner and it's certainly a lot safer for our game. All right guys, so that's a very, very basic introduction to AI, but we will be able to do so much with this in the future. So I'm incredibly excited to keep going with this. Thank you so much to all the Patreon, YouTube membership and Discord supporters. You guys rock and I really, really appreciate you. If you're interested in checking out the Patreon for more benefits, you can click this link in the top right corner right here to get that knocked out. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. There's a link in the description and it's completely free. Like I said, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.